you know, in our the world community uh, there as we go through this COVID struggle. Uh, I'm super excited about today's topic. You know, we've been talking about this new norm for a while. And so during the next 30 minutes, we want to really dive into how we're going to achieve high performance collaboration while working from home. And we're really going to focus on Microsoft Teams as a technology. So really through the webinar, here's our agenda. Uh, we're going to talk about leveraging Teams to work remotely. We want to make sure you're all aware of some of the really cool features in Teams uh, and things that really help you. Uh, when you're working from home. Uh, then we're going to look at some tips and tricks uh, for working from home and look at some of the things that really help us be successful. And then we're finally going to look at some of the best practices for high performance collaboration. You know, we, we really want to make sure that when we're working from home, uh, when we're not in the office, when we're not face to face, we're still able to have those same connections uh, with people and we're still able to get that same workload. Maybe if not, uh, an even better uh, workload uh, when we work from home. So my name is Paul Twig and I'm the National Technology and Innovation Leader uh, in Canada, NTT Data Services. And we've been talking a lot about how to achieve this high performance collaboration. So while everyone tweaks uh, the best practices to work for themselves, there seems to be a central theme that exists to really make it work. So a, a new way of communicating, a new way of collaborating, both that require specifically really a new approach on how we're going to get work done. But ultimately, I think it boils down to you know, how strong of a communicator uh, are we? Uh, recently, I've been so impressed by our NTT data services leadership, uh, especially over the last month that they've really gone out of their way to communicate, to help, and ultimately be a backbone for not only our employees, but also our customers. Only this morning, I received an email about a live online sessions coming uh, that will help us relax, recharge, and uh, rejuvenate, as the email said. You know, fantastic example of the topic that we're really going to talk about today. So let me introduce you to all of uh, our panel on the webinar. First of all, uh, let me introduce you to Cerise, uh, who's a leader in NTT Data's Canadian Oracle cloud practice, uh, a strategist, and she really bridges the gap between business, technology, and people. So, Cerise, thank you for joining the webinar. Thank you. And also, we have Shay, and uh, Shay's a chief technologist at NTT Data, uh, host of the global podcast podcast, Living Ahead and Certified High Performance Coach. And uh, one thing about Shay is she's got more energy than all of us put together. Uh, Shay, <laughs> welcome to the webinar. Thank you, Paul. And uh, finally, Bruce. Uh, uh, Bruce is one of our trusted technology directors located in Toronto and uh, focuses on the Microsoft 365 platform. Is going to bring us lots of insights into Microsoft Teams on the webinar today. Welcome, Bruce. My pleasure, Paul. Thank you. So let's jump right into this uh, topic, right? So how do we leverage Microsoft Teams uh, without uh, feeling uh, feeling remote, you know, feeling distance from our current workforce? And, you know, while I would say not, a, not everything is about the tool, if we learn to work with the tools that we're given, it can actually make us feel that we're actually part of a team uh, there. So really to kick this off, I'm going to hand this over to Bruce uh, here. So, Bruce, I, I know, you know, working remotely, working with Microsoft Teams is nothing new to you. Uh, you know, it's something that you've mastered uh, over the last few years. Really, you know, here's the question. What stands out to you as making a big difference in helping you feel like you're part of a team in relation to Microsoft Teams as a collaboration tool? Uh, thanks, Paul. Great question, actually. Uh, let me just start just, you know, like introducing what the Microsoft Team is, right? So Microsoft Teams is, is basically a, a unified communication platform. It is part of an Office 365 uh, offering from Microsoft, um, which provides a chat, uh, phone, video conferencing, collaboration, meeting sp spaces, as well as uh, integration with your application. So basically kind of, uh, you know, a, a Swiss Army tool that you can use for pretty much anything and everything that you do your day-to-day -day, uh, work life, right? And um, in order to start working properly with the, with the teams, it, let's just step back and, and uh, take a look at, you know, like how are you going to set up your physical workspace? That's an important piece. Uh, first of all, you need to have a, a safe, safe and secure place, you know, where uh, 
you, you find a space to work uh, which has uh, good ventilation, proper lighting, good ergonomics. Uh, it must be comfortable, right? And your furniture and everything uh, to your order, your liking. Uh, you might want to have your, you know, like posture is set up properly. Your, your, uh, you, you look at uh, your computers and and setup is is properly done. And uh, another thing is uh, you might want to minimize the uh, distraction. In order to do that, you eliminate uh, you know uh, possible distractions by removing clutters and maybe eliminating some items that may generate some uh, unwanted noise uh, when you're on the calls or things like that. And uh, and you can also take a look at uh, a place for equipment and and materials which identify a workbase for you where your equipment and materials. You know they, they can remain undisturbed even you ship locations during the day so that's your basically work base of course we do all these things in virtual world not where we're not in you know like uh in face-to-face -face in office space anymore in order to set up your virtual world um i recommend you know like the very first thing to have is the best connection of course the wired is the best but you may not get a wired connection all the time so if not available then you know you find a spot uh, where you can get the best wi-fi reception in the home and you, you consider your distance from from the your wi-fi router and also while you're doing that keep in mind that uh, most of the household appliances like fridges and things like that they can actually interfere with your router signals and um, and also think about uh, security right and make sure you comply with your uh, corporate security protocols by using either VPN or remote desktop. And also uh, make sure that your home network is secure with proper security protocol. Like you don't really want to use an open Wi-Fi network so that your neighbors and people walking on the streets, they can tap into same network where you do your business. And of course, uh, it's a good idea to have uh, an alternatives or have a backup plan. Uh, I've been working at, at home, uh, remote, uh, working remotely a long time. So there are times that your internet connection either goes down or low, lows, uh, uh, lowers its quality. So for situations like that, you might want to have your Teams app installed on your on your phone or tablet that you can actually use your uh, your data plan to continue your meetings while you got interrupted, right? So that's your plan B or, or, or backup plan that you can utilize. Another thing that I can suggest is um, bring or turning on the camera or bringing video onto the chats. It's, it's a great use uh, of video while communicating with people. It provides another level of depth to your communications. And uh, to do that, you, you, you must set up your microphone and, and camera before your, uh, your meetings. Make sure that you feel comfortable. Make sure that, you know, like everything is working uh, in order. And um, what, what I found personally is the camera and the video makes uh, one feel more inclusive and feeling of engagement by seeing facial impressions by others and yourself and, and showing people's mimics, etc. And uh, if you don't want to show up your room, there are also features in Microsoft Teams that you can turn uh, on the background blur, or you can even put some background pictures that people think that you're in Hawaii or, or your favorite location when you're doing your meetings. Of course, when it comes to Teams, there's a lot uh, to it. And um, uh, I'll probably pass it to uh, Shay to talk, uh, give some examples on, on communi how to communicate on Teams. Absolutely. Um, I love that you are talking about communication. It's such an important piece of it. Um, on the different side, I haven't been working remote for a long time. So this was definitely something I had to understand um, how to easily communicate with other people. And Teams has definitely been a big part of that. Within Teams, you have to make sure to communicate both within your team and the other teams, keeping that connection. Just because we're in silos doesn't mean that we can't keep the same environment as in the office, right? And there's also that social versus work meetings. Um, you, it typically, if you're in an office, you have those water cooler conversations. Now, instead of that, actually scheduling a virtual coffee or you know um, a virtual lunch, things of that nature, to keep that connection alive, because we are, um, you know, creatures of 
of habit and we have to form those kinds of habits. Now, as far as MS Teams, I know that that has a huge part in the collaboration of it all. Uh, and I know Sharice is really big on that, um, but those notifications are definitely something you have to be aware of. Yeah, and um, I'll just build on what Shay is saying in terms of the notifications and some other ways to communicate and working with teams. So there's the social aspect of being able to have those water cooler conversations on teams as well as being able to schedule a virtual coffee. And adding to that, one of the things that I have absolutely loved about teams is that now we're in this new paradigm of, of working from home. So on the one hand, it feels like that there's this there's obstacles where we can't communicate within our work setting that we can't be able to share documents and so some of the work that i do is both internal and external and the the thing that's really great about teams is it allows for that internal work collaboration with your internal teams where you can open up what's called a team channel and then you can share documents and you can have audio calls and video calls and the, on the audio calls is you can actually show that document and share your screen and so it's as if you're actually present with that individual so or individuals so that's what's amazing about teams is again where on the one hand, when you're working from home, you feel like there might be that barrier, but actually when I'm sharing docs, I feel as if I'm present right there in the moment. And then the other thing too, is I work a lot with external clients. So we have been able to, with that external communication, we've been able to have our meetings. We've been able to share our documents and share our files. And then as well with that, sh that sharing of the screen is even though I might not be physically present with that external external client by being able to have the audio calls and being able to share documents again i feel as if my clients and my teams are physically with me right there in that moment and then as well with teams and um and working with external clients is a lot of the work that i do is i have to do workshops so i know that i was used to being able to to set up a meeting time, allocate a boardroom so that I could be physically face to face with everyone whiteboarding during my workshops. But now with Teams, with this ability to communicate externally and with, with internally is that I've learned how to do these workshops. So being able to share your documents. So I shared spreadsheets or even within teams there's this whiteboarding capability where i can brainstorm on the fly so there's a lot of unique ways to be able to communicate with teams and being able to collaborate with teams and now bruce i'm going to hand it over and he's going to talk he will talk more about some of that collaboration uh sherry's fantastic points on the on the collaboration aspect of the teams uh, I, what I would like to add on, on that uh, as, as well is when collaborating online, uh, try to change your habits of sharing files, right? Especially uh, the ones that you always share using emails, OneDrives, and what we always do is, you know, using uh, other traditional methods like file shares. Take a look at that, you know, like how else you can do by using Teams, uh, which you can, you know, think about placing those files where it really belongs, such as if a file that is important for a meeting, put the file in the meeting space in the, in the Teams, or if that file particularly belongs at a channel, put it in the channel so whoever is a member of that channel or a team, they can access that, that file instantaneously so at, at where it belongs. And, and this will allow you to work on documents together and update the content instead of emailing or sharing the files from your desktop, from your file shares, back and forth many times over and over. And um, if you also need to brainstorm, uh, you can try using uh, white powers, as Sherry's mentioned, in the Teams as a digital canvas that will help you bring your collective ideas to life. And uh, I also would like to add that tracking notes and action items and uh, about sharing frequently used documents. In channel or in chats, you can create tabs for important files, websites, or dashboards. So the content can be accessed easily when someone actually goes into the channel 
you don't have to search for a content. It's right up front of uh, on the on the channel itself. And um, take notes and, and share follow-ups in the chats with people uh, who are member of that particular chat. Try using Planner for any tasks that which require action or need to be followed up, and you can actually link that particular planner into your uh, channel or a team. Um, it is also harder to get casual recaps in the, in the hallway, as Shay mentioned. And, and of course, there's no hallway when you're working at home, your virtual office. However, there's always a meet now feature which can be used like hallway or water cooler conversations. So those are the points that I wanted to add on top of co uh, collaboration. Uh, Paul, now back to you. Awesome. Uh, that, some really cool points. And I think one of the things we take away from that is Teams really is that just that one-stop shop uh, to collaboration. It's not it's not Microsoft Teams Plus. Uh, just, just for everybody listening, we are having a competition here on the call to see how many times we can use the word team inside one sentence, and uh, we're going to add it up at the end uh, there. But you know, maybe if I just you know highlight some of the points that were made uh, on the slide there. You know, you know, Bruce brought up you know that connectivity and Wi-Fi. I, I know since we've had this work from home and study from home, you know, in our house we've gone from uh, you know two laptops up to five laptops, and so you know I've had to rebuild my uh, my Wi-Fi uh, there, making sure there's two different Wi-Fi's, making sure there's QoS uh, there, making sure the video games really can't uh, interfere with uh, with a call uh, that that we might uh, might be having. You know the the video background blur. Bruce mentioned that the you know it, within Teams, you know coming feature, you know, the AI around audio that'll take out noises like, uh, you know, dog noises. Uh, and uh, you know, these are all huge things that are really going to help us uh, uh, collaborate effectively. Most importantly, though, I think, you know, the, the comment that uh, both uh, Sharice and, uh, and Bruce made there was all about what are we going to do with our documents, right? Make sure that we're not sharing our documents in the traditional way that we're doing it. This is, this is the big change, right? Put your document inside your meeting. Uh, put your document inside the channel, uh, as was made. Put your document inside the conversation. You know, I had a, uh, a great conversation with somebody the other day who uh, uh, was talking to me about having lunch with a, with a friend uh, still, and it was actually an online lunch. They both had their lunches. They were com having a conversation uh, over Teams, uh, had the video enabled. They were both eating, just like they were, uh, just like they were in person. And so you're... Make sure you're using all of these really cool features uh, because you already have the tool. So we're going to move on to uh, the next topic uh, now and look at some of the tips and tricks uh, that we can use uh, to work from home. And I know Sharice has already uh, started to mention uh, some of these, you know, some of the differences between what is a meeting, which typically was always scheduled in our calendar, you know, prior to work from home versus the conversations that might have happened in a hallway, uh, you know, next to the, the water cooler uh, there. We talk about the dreaded workshop uh, there. You know, how do we get everybody in a boardroom uh, and just like the slideshows, you know, get people writing on post-it notes and sharing uh, that uh, information and being able to collaborate and move things around. It's a foreign concept to us uh, typically when we do that from home. So, Sharice, You've been working from home for many years, uh, you know, with remote teams, using teams and other tools uh, as well. You know, and this slide's all about tips and tricks. So I'm going to ask you if you can uh, let our listeners uh, know, or if you can summarize uh, some of that experience that you have into a few minutes uh, here with us today. Yeah. So uh, effectively, with with working from home, I mean, one of the things that I have found really advantageous is this ability to be able to um, essentially have a meeting if I don't have it in my calendar and I need to chat with someone. So in the past, maybe I'd walk down the hall and knock on their door or in an open environment, um, say, can I interrupt you for a second? And so now though, what I, what I do with working from home is I can ping them. I can, we can set up an ad hoc meeting and I can have people um, join in with me, if let's say I start off a conversation with one person, there's a way with, within Teams that you can bring in um, and add another person to that meeting on, on the fly. So, you know, that's the one thing that I found effective as, again, even in that different paradigm where I'm used to walking down a hall and, and um, trying to get everyone in a boardroom. Now, 
with with teams or even in general with working from home, it's a way that I've been able to um, accommodate the, the differences from being physical versus being virtual. And so with whether it's um, ad hoc meetings or um, scheduled meetings, I know that uh, Shay can probably talk a little bit about some of the etiquette and some of the things to take into consideration from a tips and tricks perspective when we're meeting online. So Shay, if you love to hear what you have to say about meetings. Absolutely. So for meetings, there's definitely some things to note. Everyone is in the same boat. That's something to keep in mind, right? We're all trying to be respectful of each other's time, um, you know, show up to the meeting when, when it's time for the meeting, you know, have that time to pause. And really, I'm going to take a moment to talk about well-being. Um, for well-being, I think that within teams, within your schedule, you can always block off some time for yourself, right? And what I mean by that is having a, a healthy calendar rather than it just being meeting after meeting after meeting. You need to make sure you have those boundaries set up. Um, something I think I noticed recently um, is having that routine built up. So rather than just getting up and getting straight to work, I've had to, you know, change up my routine, uh, get out of my pajamas, get out of, get into work clothes, get myself in that mindset, right? So I think those healthy boundaries for us to, uh, to keep in mind. Um, this isn't a Teams particularly comment, but after each meeting, do something um, that, that's active. Do 10 push-ups, do 10 squats, something to keep you engaged because you want to be present during these meetings. It's very easy to kind of get distracted and have your mind start to wander. Uh, and, and the last piece I want to talk about really is that setting the status meeting, uh, the setting the status messages. And I would recommend you always set a positive message, right? Um, let people know that, hey, uh, you know, be back by 3.30 p.m. Eastern or whatever time it is. Or, you know, uh, I, I know some people are get really creative with those messages talking about themselves or, you know, have a, a fabulous day or some kind of a quote uh, that shows personality, right? And right now we need to shine our personalities through. So Sharice, I know you always talk about recording the meetings. Uh, that That's a big piece. Yeah. Well. And Yes. Um, th thanks, Shay. That's one of the things too, you know, we've, um, with Shay mentioning about then, you know, setting these status messages and when you set their status messages, you can get a sense of um, what a person is doing. And then when we're in these meetings then is one of the, one of the features that I have absolutely loved and I found quite useful with working from home. And, and I talked earlier about having workshops and working with my external clients is that what I have found really useful is the ability to be able to record meetings because recording meetings is a way that can complement meeting minutes. And I found that when you record a meeting that especially when you're in a workshop where you're listening and there could be important issues, the benefits that you get with recording a meeting is, is it allows you to be able to hear what those issues are rather than having to worry about documenting all those meeting minutes. Now, you can still document the meeting minutes, but it becomes complementary to recording the meeting. Now, one of the things too, though, with recording meetings is that every organization has different policies around when you can record a meeting and when you um, and the privacy aspects of it. So one of the things that's really that is really critical is just to make everyone aware that in fact that you are recording the meeting just to to respect that those privacy aspects. But again, make sure that with your company policy, get an idea of what is acceptable with respect to privacy. So again, recording meetings is a really great way to add some efficiency to your collaboration and to those meetings. And then just some additional aspects of efficiencies and um, collaboration. I'm gonna pass it to Bruce because he's gonna talk about this ability to customize your virtual workspace and how that can add some productivity. So Bruce, I'm gonna hand it over to you. 
Thanks, Cherise. Uh, I, I can add a few points on, on, on how to customize that virtual workspace that we, we actually talked about earlier. It is, it is uh, similar to organizing your physical desk in your office. Like when you're in your office, your desk, you put your frequently used files in, in you know, like closer to you, uh, your tools that you can access, you know, on the force drawer or things like that, right? And similar to that, you can pin your favorite, you know, one-on-one -on -one group chats, the teams and the channels on the top. So they always appear on the top left. Whenever you need to, to open your teams, it's right there. You can access right in front of you, right? So that's a great way to do it. And another thing is, you know, you can, uh, drag and drop your teams and the channels in an order the priority order the way that you want to see so the one that you work more, more often there on top and less uh, often there on, on the bottom and uh, if you really want to you know uh, remove some clutter away from your eyes you can hide some of the teams that you don't work often but you know where they are when you really uh, want to find them and and those really great points uh, Shay, you mentioned about uh, having attempt push-ups in, in between the meetings. I'll take that and I'll ab absolutely apply that. With that, I'll pass it to Paul to talk about the best practices. Hey, uh, Bruce, you, you might apply the 10 push-ups. I was hoping Shay was going to say two. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, a, a lot better for me. Uh, but you know, th this is a fantastic conversation. You know, and one, one that you know, I, I wish we had a, a whole bunch more time. Uh, to uh, to dive into, but take take that meeting recording piece uh, really really seriously. You know, I think she's uh, made made a big point with that meeting recordings. You know, especially when you do it with Teams because the recording gets auto uploaded to Microsoft Stream. Inside Stream, it gets transcribed automatically for us, and all of a sudden, your meeting becomes a searchable artifact. And I, I know I've worked in you know several organizations where you kind of feel if you don't show it to the meeting, you're missing out. So then you show it to a lot more meetings than maybe you should be at, uh, which makes you a lot less effective. Uh, where if now we get into this process of recording the meeting, I can very easily find the pieces of information that apply to me. So, you know, there's not as much sense of urgency to, to have to be in the meeting. You know, maybe there's something more important that I have to do uh, at that specific time. And I would say, you know, especially right now when we've got work from home uh, enforced uh, there where, you know, we've got members of, uh, of our team there where uh, both partners uh, are working, they have children, and now they're working on different schedules. You know, one might work six till one, uh, the other one might pick up two and then go through to eight. So we're not working that standard nine to five day. And so by not recording the meeting, we're, we're actually doing them a disservice uh, there. You know, we're saying, hey, your schedule doesn't work for us. By recording the meeting, we're really allowing people to be involved and uh, re really collaborate uh, well together. You know, and if we go back to the initial point that we had with Teams, where now documents are stored inside that meeting as well, the conversation around the meeting happens in the meeting. And keep in mind with Teams, that conversation can happen before the meeting starts, during the meeting, or after the meeting. Then just because somebody can't show up at that moment in time, does not mean that they can't be involved. And I think this is really one of the ways that um, uh, encourages uh, really strong collaboration. You know, one of the other points I'd make before we uh, move on to our last topic here as well is, you know, if you're struggling in this, uh, the, this particular area, from a technology perspective, you know, there's the Microsoft 365 My Analytics uh, piece which uh, you know you can get an email I think uh, every week uh, from different aspects of my analytics that shows you how well you're collaborating uh, with everybody in your organization. It shows you how long you've spent in meetings, how uh, attentive you were, uh, how much time um, or how often you were late to meetings, uh, which documents are being worked on, and really shows you that collaborative piece. And I know for me when I started looking at my analytics. Uh, that it really gave me a sense of um, how I uh, drove certain messages within the organization. Uh, you know, it told me about how I caused conflict potentially outside of uh, working hours. Uh, that you know, maybe maybe emailing people too early or too late, expecting a response back based on the messaging in the uh, in the email. So a lot of really cool information uh, can come from uh, my analytics. So. Let's drive into our, our last topic uh, here. Um, you know, and I, I'm a technologist, I'm a geek, 
Uh, I love technology. You know, Microsoft Teams is uh, where I'm at, like, like with Bruce uh, there. Um, but being able to do things effectively is something that really, uh, really is part of me, my, my makeup and, uh, and who I am. Uh, I want to. Um, I, I'm not going to suggest I do uh, there. And I think that's one of the reasons uh, uh, why we really wanted to look at some of the best practices around high performance collaboration. Because I believe all of us have this desire uh, to collaborate uh, you know, in a, in a really good way, uh, but you know, maybe we get caught up on some of the minutia, right? Some of the small pieces that stop us collaborating. So I, I'm going to start off by handing this over to Shay uh, there, because I, I know Shay, high performance collaboration is really your thing, and you know, one of your goals is really to make everyone around you function at a high rate using effective collaboration mechanisms. You know, maybe in a few minutes here, can you highlight? some of the key pillars to high performance collaboration? Absolutely. So, um, I, and I'm, I'm about to unleash my inner coach on everybody here in a little bit when we get to work-life harmony. Uh, but, you know, when it comes to the technology piece, we're going to start with technology first and then work our way to us as human beings. Uh, when it comes to technology and within these collaboration sessions, you know, it's always wonderful when you can get five minutes before, you know, towards the end of the meeting back and really understanding that that, that time is going to be used, you know, either you're going to run to the, you know, washroom or uh, get some water or something, right? So that is a courtesy that's practiced across the industry. If you can conclude five minutes before, I know we tend to run five minutes over, but it would be best to conclude five minutes before um, the end of the meeting. Uh, I know Sharice, our Already talked quite extensively around recording the meetings and really having that as a go to, you know, if you didn't quite catch everything, you go back to it, listen to it, um, make sure you get all the highlights from it. Uh, from there, I want us to dive into, you know, continuing to drive the team culture. And I know, uh, Bruce, you have a few comments on this one regarding scheduling meetings to drive that culture. Absolutely. Thanks, Shay. Uh, when you when you want to drive a team culture using a tool, tool itself is is, is just a, a, a matter of, you know, the thing that we can get to do our work. But uh, what I found is if we add, uh, you know, like our uh, personality or, or the culture or, or environment into the tool, then it becomes a high performance environment for us to work on. So what, what I found whenever possible, it is really b best to keep building team culture, even when you're working apart. Um, for example, you can schedule a birthday party for a teammate uh, using Microsoft Teams. And just jump into a Teams meeting and, and then just put a few, a few uh, giphys that actually expresses your, your uh, situation at this moment or uh, celebrate a project success using the Microsoft team, again, with some uh, memes and, and, and uh, funny giphys, everything else. Um, bring some personal touch to your, your meetings. If you want to share your room, just by all means, take your camera and then flip it around. Show people that, you know, how you're working in, in the home. Uh, other day, we were in one of our uh, team scrums that we were doing a daily uh, project meetings, and one of our um, uh, team members who happened to be a, a, our graphic designer in the, in the team uh, pr project, and while we were talking, he just pulled his guitar and started playing the guitar and singing of it. So this actually brought a great example of you know, getting to know the guy that, or, or your team member that you actually, you know, feel related to or close to, which you don't, you don't really get to see this in the real office life. In, in office life, people go with, you know, like suits and ties or, or certain attire, you just talk work and nothing else. But when you're working from home, now it's different, it's more personal. That's where I personally see the high performance meetings occur. Uh, I'd love Shay, do you have anything to add to this? Yeah, um, and then Shay, I'd love to hear what you have to say as well. And, um, you know, I think that that's the, the opportunity that we have here is that in this new paradigm of working from home that, you know, can make us feel very a, a part. I actually feel that 
working from home has actually brought us closer together by adding those personal touches. And just an example, you know, I have a family. Um, now things have changed where I have to be taking into consideration homeschooling. So even for even let's say when my camera's on and it's video, it just might so happen that during a meeting, one of my kids might have might be walking by my my workspace. So, you know, let them wave to everyone on the team. And again, it just adds that spirit of feeling connected to the team. And when you're connected to your teams, that is where we really feel that we're very much still part of the organization, even though we're physically not face to face. So that's what I know I try to do is is bring something personal about me. I also have three dogs. So occasionally what I might do if I have one of the dogs is on my lap, I might show um, show the team one of my favorite dogs and just, you know, help them to get to know me better because then that connection really helps to drive that that productivity and that performance. And I Shay, I know that you probably have much to say about that perspective of performance and team culture. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, um, the reality of it all is that high performance teams are made of high performers, right? Um, it's it's important to recognize that you matter, your well-being matters, you're a part of this team. Yes, we're not all physically together. Even us right now, you know, we're, we're the way we've, we're doing this meeting, it's not scripted by any means. We're just kind of having this wonderful conversation. Um, so, I, I completely agree with you on that and, you know, understanding that we are social creatures. And I love that you talked about bringing your dog and your kids into um, the meetings when it's possible, of course, uh, because I, I do understand that that at times it depends on the kind of meeting also. So um, now within the team dynamic itself, there's two pieces to everything, right? There's the role of the managers, right? Who should definitely reach out to their employees, check in, um, uh, see how things are going, right? Have those one-on-ones just because you can't pop by doesn't mean you, you, you just let go of them. And a best practice within for managers particularly, is trust your team members, right? Trust your team members that they're doing their work. I, I mean, uh, micromanaging is very, very difficult on, on employees in general. And having that level of trust where you get, you know, have the tasks, you have the meeting, go over what needs to be done and get that, you know, work a, a, in a timely manner back. Um, on the other side of that, there's the employee piece of it. And employees definitely reach out to your managers. If your manager hasn't been, you know, checking in with you, reach out to them, see what's going on. You know, maybe there's something that they're, they would need help and you're there right at the moment they, they need it. Uh, definitely encourage the managers to lead by example more than anything for sure. Now, Shay, uh, I'm glad that you brought this point up. Actually, it's uh, it's very interesting that uh, something happened in, in our home. My wife, actually, she's uh, a mid-level manager to an insurance company. And recently she started to work from home, which she has never done it before. And she manages about 20, 25 people. And, you know, what, what I've seen is actually she came one day and, and then asked me that, OK, these people are they, they start working at 7 a.m and I don't know how to manage them. What am I going to do? And of course, you know, what I told her is, you know, you really have to look at from, you know, like deliverable or outcome basis, right? People can work whenever they want. And if you if you can reach out to them when you need to, that's, that's all that matters. And at the end of the day, if they deliver what they need to deliver, that's, that's where you really need to shift your uh, management style from time basis, you know, like punching cars or whatever, to really outcome based or deliverable based uh, management style. So those are the kind of interesting things that, you know, like we see the shift in our management style as well. And and with that, I would like to really open that, you know, uh, floor for maybe Sherry Paul to chime in on that subject as well. Yeah, so I just have, one, I, I have a, a couple of comments about that, Bruce, and I'm so glad that you bring it up because I think for me and I've been working I have been working from home um, for the last couple of years and so I actually find and, and you've said it very well 
Bruce, managing deliverables versus managing time. I actually can see an opportunity here again with working from home because when you're managing deliver deliverables versus time, it adds a level of flexibility and that level of flexibility can improve productivity productivity and efficiency. So I see this new paradigm as an opportunity to really be able to be more productive because you can build in those times when you have those really focused um, that mindset to be able to get the work done. And then because of the managing of the deliverable and being more productive, I, I think for me, I'm finding that there's an increased level of accountability. So, you know, and I'll go back to what I said earlier is that sometimes with this new paradigm shift, and I think Bruce, you brought it up, you know, with your wife being, um, getting used to working from home versus working in an office is that there are these benefits of increased accountability, efficiency, and flexibility, and productivity. So definitely uh, a different paradigm, but lots of opportunity ahead of us. And Shay, maybe love to hear if you have whatever else you can add to that. And I know that you can add lots to that. So I'll just pass it back to you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And, you know, um, it, it's interesting you said that paradigm. When we first started working from home, I had to build a completely different routine, right? And this is going to dive into the well-being piece. Um, I'm the kind of person who has their gym, has their, you know, work office. Everything is strategically placed. I have a long commute. I listen to my audio books or podcasts, things like that, right? And all of that went away as soon as we got into this uh, situation. And I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that. But I'm going to point out um, four best practices within that. And those would be continuing to exercise, meditation, focusing on your sleep, and gratitude. And the, those four really make up that work-life harmony. Um, uh, exercise, you, you have to make sure you take more than a thousand steps a day, right? I think uh, recently I read an article that said minimum of 4,000 steps a day just to keep your, your heart rate going well, you know, things like that. Um, that's a really big piece. It's very easy to get up and, and like I said, just start from the bed, start working. That that's that's definitely going to be something that we have to be mindful of. Um, we owe it to ourselves. And when you take care of yourself, you take care of the things around. You know, uh, you're able to take better care of your work. Meditation is something that I think uh, a lot of people have been recently getting into. Just having either a guided meditation or sitting there in peace for a few minutes is really great. It's a it's a nice way to recharge, reset. Um, sleep, that's one that I think that is very underrated. Most people don't even consider it. You know, your immune system right now needs to be as high, you know, at its best functioning possible. And sleep is that. So, you know, not staying up past midnight or, you know, uh, it just depends on what time you wake up, right? So having that sleep, making sure that you're, um, you know, drinking lots of water, staying hydrated, those are all pieces of that. And then lastly is that gratitude piece. And this is probably the most par powerful. Um, you know, I, I talked about the people who kind of customize their messages. I love when I see in Teams somebody has their statuses, you know, grateful today for the sunshine and, you know, uh, the flowers during the spring or something like that. Um, I know not everybody loves that. But I do think that there's huge power in that. It helps you realize the situation you're in. One, it isn't permanent. And two, you have a lot to be grateful for. The things around you, they're just, everything is happening for a reason. And, you know, it doesn't matter what it is. It just matters. You woke up today. Isn't that a fabulous thing? And you get to continue to have, you have your job, things like that. So really having that sense of gratitude, and I'm grateful for all of you guys just putting it out there, um, uh, it is definitely a, a, a superpower that's really underrated. Um, so before I continue to keep going, I'll coach on everybody. Uh, Paul, I'm going to pass it back to you. Thanks. You know, I I, th I think I could listen to this conversation for for a long time. Time is short, though, and we we gotta 
we got to wrap up uh, there, but uh, really appreciate you guys uh, coming on the webinar uh, today. You know, some fantastic comments, right, and, and, and thoughts. And, you know, one of the things I've certainly seen it, as we've gone through, you know, the last month in this work from home is, you know, we've really got to know the person behind the suit, right? And I think that's becoming a, a fairly common phrase. You know, as Shreese mentioned, you know, bringing a dog. Uh, personally, I wouldn't put my dog on camera because it would take over the conversation because it yaps too much. Um, but, you know, if, this is the way we're getting to know people now. I, I think we've really got to know more about an individual in, in the last month than, you know, probably over the last year. Uh, the, um, I think it's all about outcome-based management, and that really fits with the tool uh, with Microsoft Teams. Uh, you know, we can we can put these tasks into Planner. Uh, we can use the other uh, pieces of Office 365 around workflow to be able to make everything jive and work together, and really create this seamless uh, culture uh, online using that particular tool. Uh, the, and don't forget, Teams is both mobile and uh, you know based on your computer. So you know while we we really need to take you know what what we've learned from Shay seriously about well-being uh, and about uh, culture and uh, being able to take a break and uh, only do two push-ups and, and 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 things like that. You know the fact that we can be connected on a phone and we can be connected on a computer to that same environment really has a massive uh, bearing uh, for us. So I'm going to conclude the webinar there. If um, you need any more information about Teams, uh, if you want any more information about how to work from home or high performance collaboration, uh, the, uh, please reach out to uh, any one of the presenters on, uh, on today's webinar. Uh, you can see all of the email addresses up there. Uh, a big thank you to, to each of them. Uh, for sharing their opinions. I know these are not things that uh, you learn in 30 seconds, right? This is a lifetime experience that we've been able to bring together uh, for, this, uh, for this particular webinar. Thank you for you listening and uh, hope we'll see you again on our next technology webinar. Thank you, everybody.